Dun dun dun! Season 1, Episode 5. Time to find another reason to stay together. A reason to stay together. Calm down. You're just saying hi. No big deal. It became a big deal. The more you tell yourself it's not a big deal, the more it becomes a big deal. It's not a big deal, Okarun. Is she waiting for me? I mean, we've been through a lot together. Yes, it's so, reasonable to think that she knows who no, you are and will greet you. She's waiting for someone else. That's also possible. Sort of doesn't matter. Oh no, he's he's in a loop. I'll just stay out no, of your way. No, that's so awkward. Why are you so awkward? Ken Takaraka. <laughs> Which will blast her. Yeah, she's good at this. You are late. Come on. Bro, you are so lucky. You're so lucky that she's so cool. <laughs> you're so lucky. Oh, I got. I can't even imagine the cycle forming here too. It just gets worse and worse. If you're on your back foot, you just keep going farther and farther back on that foot. Because then, with the acknowledgement of the fact that she's so nice and so cool, I deserve her even less. It's more to lose. This is just God's blessing. It's a one in a million thing that'll never happen again if I f*** this up. Act natural, Ken. It's not like the happiness for the rest of your entire life is at stake or anything. And all your chances for romantic success in the future. It's so sad, while also being frustratingly relatable, that it's the cause of the very problem he's afraid of. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Just for example, it's the not wanting to bother someone that's a bother. Assuming there's already a level of friendship. Because then the friend is like, wait, you thought I was going to flip out because you said hello? What do you think of me? I got to like carry the normal normalcy and structure of the relationship for both of us and swim through your insecurity and the problems you're making for no reason. The aliens said there were no girls on their planet. And thank God for that. I wonder what kind of food aliens like those eat. What do you think? Wow, she really huh? shook up that trauma. Speaking of health. I guess, uh... Uh, he's spiraling. He's spiraling. You need to keep it cool, <laughs> man. You need to be aloof. <laughs> Damn it, nerd. <laughs> you down there, you perv. Yeah, you perv, nerd. Not a problem. No matter how horrible the other kids are to me. At least I, I have can forgive them. Well, I was gonna say, okay, this is a minefield. It's a total minefield. Having Momo and how much that means to him now, way more than it probably should mean. And being able to connect the relationship with Momo to this very thing that people consider nerdy. Like this is now so much more meaningful than it was before. It's not, you know, an escapist pastime. It is a thing he can use to participate in this godsend of a person that has entered his life. So whatever, people make fun of him for reading nerdy stuff. Also, aliens are real now, so you know, they can shove it. But at the same time, making Momo the linchpin of your existence like this, sort of out sourcing your own happiness agency there because now finally i found myself an amazing friend it is really nice and wholesome though that he sees her as a friend and then that's what he's looking for not you know as a girl to constantly hit on to like think he's owed love because she's nice to him all those pitfalls i want to talk about aliens <laughs> right i want to talk to miss isa about ghosts! Yeah, I mean, how do you focus on any of this stuff? I mean, school sucks without knowing there's aliens and ghosts out there that only you can fight. Other kids just talking about boring stuff like girls, relationships, and Pokemon or whatever, I don't know. This is me just wanting to rant about ideas. And she totally wanted to talk to me too, but I was so nervous I couldn't. She must think I'm a jerk! Taking it out of his notebook. How could you be such a dumb dummy, Ken? You dumb dummy nerd. I have to fix it between us or she'll hate me forever! He's broken. Oh, I know that feeling so well. <laughs> oh man, that sent me back. For that matter, I still feel that way all the time. But there's something a little bit extra special maybe about that age because you have less choice always. You're so structured that the moments you're looking forward to maybe are made a little bit more special by the fact that you like can't choose them. Now I have just a lot more freedom. So there's no scarcity of, of choice. That longing is sort of muted a little bit. Then there's also, I mean, just like being young, there's more things that are new and exciting. Cute. Oh, they just miss each other. Okaroon. Ken Takaraka. You know real name? Dude, I ain't telling you his real name. He wears round glasses and digs the occult. Is there a kid like that in our class? Oh, it's worse than them not liking him or picking on him. They just don't know he exists. I see here. What? I can barely hear you. They barely know he exists, even though he's speaking to them. Okaroon wouldn't be in the calf. It's a zoo. I'll try the school store. The store? Well, if she's not in the cafeteria, I'll check there. Guess I'll try the cafeteria. Oh god, they're going in circles. He wouldn't be here, it's a zoo. Not here either. And that's how their relationship ended. She's avoiding me. Spiraling After this morning, intensifies. She decided I was boring and probably thinks I'm a pest too. This is why you're a pest. <laughs> wow. If only they would like, you know, life. look. <laughs> like at all. Maybe he thinks I'm pushy. Oh, am. Momo doubting herself too. I should have asked him what was wrong instead of blabbing away like a dork. No, that was exactly what the moment called for. 
Maybe he doesn't want to hang out with me. Maybe I don't even count as a backup friend. I expect this from Ken Takaraka. I'm a little bit surprised to hear it coming from Momo. But I mean, she also seems a bit lonely and isolated, even though she has friends. It's cute. It's cute that they both like each other. And I think while there are definitely some underlying things, they could do some, some sorting out just in a very simple way. This kind of longing actually works as a glue. It makes it so much sweeter when things actually work out. To go through this this state of existential agony when you have a crush or, you know, whatever it is, only to have it work out, it's, it's amazing. If only they would look slightly to any direction. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Okarun. Not actually a great match. Oh, they just kissed. This is the first kiss? Wow, well, we had our first kiss. Let's never speak of this. Why couldn't you just stay in one place? Like I knew. But this whole time, I thought you were avoiding me. What? I, thought I never would have thought something like that. <laughs> okay, oh, they're honest. It's cute. You guys were kissing. <laughs> totally kissed. I think I go around kissing nerds like oh. you. Yeah, and like Okay. At least he matched it. That could have destroyed him. So cute. I don't ever want to talk to you again. Go kick rocks. Fine. I don't want to speak to you. We had a whole relationship cycle in 30 seconds. First kiss and first breakup. Yeah, obviously. I went way overboard back there. Then her moping. I better come up with an apology. No, we got it back. What are you talking about? What happened? But you shut up already! Hey guys, her face coming. I said. This is a big moment for him if he does this in front of the whole class. What the hell are you doing? I have to talk to you right away. Why are you making that shape with your hands? I need to speak with you now, alone. You need to Please use like more descriptive words, like it's about the Kiss thing off. that Damn, you know the thing harsh. that only we know about. He's not my boyfriend. Quit spreading rumors. Jeez. I'm so on edge with Ken. Because he's such a delicate soul and he overreads everything. The truth is, I like talking. This is big. This is in front of in front of people. I don't want to talk, and that's that. Get lost, creep. Oh no, Why Momo. Are you being so mean to the guy? This is pretty mean. You're mean for cheering him on. Oh, that's yeah. Come on, Momo. I didn't know being friends with me embarrassed you that much. Yikes! That was rough. That was super rough. Oh, way too hard on that dude. Yeah. What's up with you? I mean, she's also a little bit confused. She's still a little bit sensitive because there's all these like feelings happening that are kind of weird and uncomfortable. <gasps> Sorry. Oh, nerd. Oh, I saw you. I know you from the intro. Are you okay? My bag's heavy because of my water bottle. That's great. <laughs> what? You're so kind. <gasps> huh. <laughs> She's an alien. I feel like I'm the bad guy here. Gee. Well, I guess I kind of am. There it is. <laughs> oh, points. This is major, major leverage. Holy crap. This is so lucky. What great timing for Ken in this love is war. God, what a minefield. This is embarrassing, but I think I misunderstood this kind of situation for a very long time. When I was done, I thought if I like someone, the idea is to make the person jealous by being surrounded by other girls who are displaying interest in you. What I didn't know was a lot of things like that only really makes any kind of difference whatsoever if they already like you, at least to some degree. And two, it sort of has to happen organically like this because otherwise people will see that you're trying to do it, which is not a great look. And three, it runs the risk of being a complete turnoff. You see his face? He looks so hilarious. He totally fell for me. He'll be dreaming about me till he's old. Oh, she's just playing him. That did seem a little out of nowhere. Probably the first time he was ever touched by a girl. And the last. Joke's on you. We kissed a girl on the lips earlier, kind of. I made that four-eyed loser's day. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I understand I wanted to get revenge, but murder, Momo? Oh, no! That girl My girlfriend is unconscious. <laughs> Careful, oh, Momo. Wanna walk me home? Damn, you're looking sharp in those glasses. You're walking a line right now. They deserve washed ups falling on them instead of guys falling. She's down. doing this because she hates the girl and her behavior. I mean she likes Oak too, but this is not the kind of thing that you do lightly. That was my reaction to their first interaction in the classroom when she stood up for him. She wasn't doing it for him, but my God, was that everything to him? And my God, did he read into that? Ken Takarok obviously is a web of emotions and like, yeah, I don't know, be careful stepping into it. My attitude today was the worst. I'm sorry. That's nice. In the courtyard after that, you know. Kiss. And like, I'm not embarrassed about us being friends. 
I'm a little oh, bit raw right now. I know. I totally get it. I'm just happy we could sort it out and be friends again. That's another really cool thing. I think about this a lot. It's so simple, but it's like not really well done. We know the punishment side of things really well. That comes natural. Like if someone does something wrong, it evokes anger and there's a fight. But behavior is something that is dynamic and interacting with the world and with you. So, I mean, one, reward is really good. Like recognizing people doing nice things for you. You know, people care about you and they do nice things for you and you recognize they're doing nice things for you. They will probably want to do more nice things for you. If they do nice things for you and you don't recognize the nice things they do and you punish them for the things that they're doing wrong, it's a total disincentive. Even if it just happens on the subconscious conscious level. People get frustrated. Like, you get mad about this and you're blowing up the whole relationship. Maybe this is a mistake on my part, but just this one mistake undoes everything else that I do day in and day out and all the love I actually have and the, the regard I have. You know, I had one momentary lapse of judgment and said something terrible, which I apologize for. And you didn't give me an avenue. Oh, which is the other, which is the other part. You actually have to give people an avenue to apologize and make things right. If your goal is to be good again, if your goal is a shared, pleasant, healthy relationship, and that ends up being your takeaway, my actions are good enough. My apology means nothing, but this mistake is everything. I've experienced this a bunch and I mean also I've been guilty of this where someone does something wrong and they apologize but the next step isn't like okay I'm glad we could work this out I understand you know you're a human being you made a mistake I trust you you know and instead seeing it as an opportunity to step on their necks while they're down they, oh you're sorry you think sorry is enough after what you did to me so you admit it then you admit you did something terrible how could you possibly do something so terrible are you just like a weak horrible nerd and I think in that case it may reveal what the actual goal is I mean I think the goal actually is both of us being happy and working through issues within reason an apology should should be an apology and you can move on. Another thing people will do is they will accept an apology, but then they don't understand the implications of accepting an apology. So they'll accept it in word. And then later they'll use the indiscretion that they say they've forgiven as a weapon to like keep hitting the other person over the head with every time they're not hundred percent satisfied. The apology was accepted, but there was no forgiveness given. Anyway, these kids are cool. They don't do that as much. Uh, anyway, that stuff's not yeah, what was the now? big problem? Huh? You lost your Willie again? Yeah, she's gone. We even did a special prayer. No uh, yeah, I saw it. Got your peen. She's Everything's gone. Back to normal. I'm worried about his. I don't want to finish that sentence. Say what? My balls. Huh? What? My balls are gone. <laughs> oh, I mean, okay. If I could only choose one. <laughs> now you know why I asked to see your junk. I know one of the reasons why you asked to see his junk. When I saw my shaft there, I was so relieved. I uh, honestly, yeah. Right. Okay, no, I get it. Listen to you calling it a shaft like it's massive. <laughs> oh no. Your age, it's more like a little pencil. How do you know you didn't see it? I've never seen it. Yeah. That settles it. And how do you know what? Okay. What? Okay, never mind. I don't want to go that deep into this. How does she know? Okay. Yep. Momo, bring me some kind of doll. And bring a wash tub full of water. You can see his soul in the mirror. There's something hiding inside him. Plot twist, it was not balls. A talisman stuck on good? When do you come alive? When do you come to life? You tell me! And now we can begin the ritual. The lines in the kanji for persons support each other! No, that hurt! You're not keen, Pachi sensei and he'd never call a kid a ride tangerine! Momo. You see anything just now? I did not see his balls. When you see the aura change color, grab it and pull it out. I can take out a person's aura? It's not his. And if it ain't part of him, you should be able to snatch it. Get ready. Are there any risks we should be aware of? This sounds highly invasive. Oh, I felt it in my hands. I had it, but it's gone. But do we have our balls back? Oh, it's in the room with us. Oh, there it is. Hello. Come out, you rotten tangerine! <laughs> She's like really hooked on this tangerine thing. Rotten tangerines everywhere. Here, kitty, kitty. She's such a natural. Can you pull it towards you? I got it! Nice. Let me go right now! I'll murder you all! Let me go! Wait, it's... <laughs> It's Turbo Granny's voice again. It's now it's a from MLCL. Oh, that oh, it's Turbo Granny. Turbo Granny gets reincarnated. Oh, that's why we like Turbo Granny. That was amazing. Your psychic powers have gotten Yeah, she's stronger. learning really quickly, just oh, yeah. automatically, intuitively. Also, I feel like the author really loves women's clothing. There's so much attention put into her outfits. Well, like, Ken Takaraka just, you know, wearing this. He's kind of cute like that. Don't you disrespect me, So it was Turbo punk. Granny all along. Right when the barrier started burning me, I switched over to my astral form and swam through the fire. Of course, the astral form. How could I have missed it? So I stayed nice and quiet. And took his balls. To get all my power back. And get his balls back. Especially to no numbskull chippy like you. I'm gonna make you suffer for this. This is not the cute cat companion I was expecting. You hear that? It's over 
for you. Give back my balls. Give them back right now or else. He means it. If I were you, I'd forget all about getting rid of me. I am your boss now. If I die, any hope you have of getting your nuts back dies with me. That is a serious threat. It's nice that Momo is also worried about that. I'm in charge here because I got the kid by his balls. Literally, Literally yeah. You're gonna kill these bitches for me. That's a lot of power. I mean, I could. I mean, my nuts. Watch your balls, or don't you? I mean, I do. Now, if it was my weenie. Oh, he just gets possessed. Man. What a drag, yo. You must have been hanging on to him real tight, because it looks like only your consciousness left the kid's body. Oh, that was convenient. Well done. Does that mean not her powers? Ooh. And guess what? I'm the only one that can put who you has, back together. Who has who by the balls now? Calling this here Kimpachi a bitch was way out of line. You dumbass cat turd rotten tangerine. <laughs> That's the tangerine thing. I don't get it, but I like it. I your sensei, squirt. You this is not the cute game I was anticipating. We're abusing animals. I thought it was going to be just like fun and games like Morgana from Persona 5. We're going to go to school together, have misadventures. Instead, we're abusing animals. We're beating the hell out of this cat. <laughs> All right, Turbo, oh, man, the B word counter in the show also off the charts. You felt as sorry for those dead girls. As right, I right. Did. Yeah, we we like Turbo Granny. So let's all chill out and be nice. To a certain extent, she was trying to. Well, she's there. She's cursing people because of the the memory of these the lost girls. A lot of pain there. If that's the origin of her sentiment, then yeah, I mean, Ken Takaraka should be neutralized, neutralized. But that obviously not the case. Okay, lady, hand over his balls. They ain't with me. No, she was bluffing. Now look, we had a deal here. Give them back. I don't have them, I swear. I sort of lost them. I'm where sure are where. Ken's balls? <gasps> Ken's gonna find his balls. You are not who I thought you would be. I will never see this ending the same again. This is just Turbo Granny. I wonder if Turbo Granny can find what she's looking for while Ken Takaraka finds what he's looking for. Also, this means Turbo Granny can live a life, right? Maybe there's some clo closure to be had there. At least she gets to leave her tunnel. Also, I, like, Ken Takaraka looking for his balls is a metaphor, right? There are several layers of analysis in him looking for his balls. We went from the Lost Weenie arc to the Lost Ball arc. I'm pretty confident I can predict the ending of the show now. In the end, Ken Takaraka reaches the final location of his testicles only to realize the testicles were inside of him the entire time or his balls were the friends he made along the way.